Alright, let's get into how to make a Gracie wrap. First step will be how to sew the back neckties. Uh, so you want to take one of your back neckties wrong side up, press one centimeter down on the short edge, and then you want to take your long edges and press them in one centimeter as well. Turn it around and do the other side. There we go, and then you want to fold it in on itself again to create a one centimetre little tie. Perfect, there you go. And now we want to sew it down, so you want to sew down the short edge first, make sure to back stitch at the start, and then down the long edge with um, an edge stitch. You don't actually need the back neck ties if you have a boat neck front or high square back as these two necklines will keep your dress nicely on your shoulders. Okay, so the next step is sewing your waist wrap. You're going to take your waist wrap and put right sides together, folding in half down the long edge. Put it up to your machine, starting at the widest edge first, um, the one that has that bit of a curve. Um, back stitch at the start and I've actually pinned it first together please ignore the fact that I just sewed over a pin usually take your pins out first as you probably know definitely pin first because it definitely makes your seam finish nicely at the end so you just do one way strap at a time and then repeat for the other now you want to sew your darts so you want to take your bodice wrong side up and those two notches I'm pointing to, you want to match them. Put a pin in it to secure it. And then you want to find where you marked your dart point. As you can see, mine is there. I've pinched it together. Pop your dart into the machine and you want to start at your notches. And then aim for that um, dart point and you actually want to end at it if you want to get a nice finish a little bit before and then taper in um, just so it's not such a sharp finish there we go and you want to repeat that for all four darts on the main bodice and the facing bodice so four darts in total there you go step four is the back facing so there i've got um, you want to put the right sides together and line it up along there and you'll notice there's a little bit that hangs over the end but that's fine that's just the seam allowance you just want to pin that to make sure you're getting a nice seam there back stitch always at the start taking my pins out You go back stitch at the end and that's what that'll look like and now I'm going to under stitch it so I'm going to pull the seam allowance up to the right hand side um, and edge stitch it down there or top stitch so that's nice and clean and it has a nice finish like that step five is shoulder seams so you want to take um, your facing back and then you're facing front and right sides together match the shoulder seams and sew along there with of course the one centimeter seam allowance and always back stitching an end and as you go you do actually really want to snip your threads um, in the video I was just trying to motor through but really you do want to snip those threads so that it's nice and clean finish when you're, when you're all done. So the other side there and you actually want to repeat that for the main bodices so the main back and main front so their shoulder seams together as well. Step 6 overlocking so just want to overlock pretty much what you've already sewn together so um, the shoulder seams of the facing piece that you've now sewn together and also the shoulder seams of the main bodice piece that you would have just sewn together as well. And you can see I'm also overlocking the waist wrap. So you want to overlock both of the waist wraps that you would have sewn. 
Um, and when you turn around here, you can do it like I've just done there. And you want to get quite close to the point because you don't want too much excess there. Now this is stitching the label, so you can skip this step if you don't want to stitch in the label. I'm going to be stitching on my bold one label. Obviously you won't have that. Um, perhaps in the future I will hope to somehow maybe send out bold one labels so that you can have that on your dresses. Um, but yeah, so this is just me stitching on the label to give you an idea of when to do this. Obviously you have to change your thread to white. Well, you could always stitch it in the same colour, but... It is quite nice to finish it in the colour of the label um, and I'm just stitching all the way around the label so that it just creates a nice finish and it's not um, peeling off or anything. There we go. Now we're going to be sewing the neckline together. We're going to be doing this via the facing and the main bodice sections. Um, right side of the facing up as you can see there and I'm just putting in the necktie that's where it would sit if you do have neckties um, and then you want to put right side of your main bodice connecting around the neckline there I've just taken out that back necktie because I have a boat neck I don't really need that on my dress because it will stay on my shoulders fine I'm going to pin the neckline around and it's right sides together so on the top there you'll see that it, that is my main front and main back bodice sewn together and now I'm connecting it to the um, facing bodice pieces. So I've pinned it now so that should keep it nice in place and now I'm going to sew around that neckline. You just want to make sure that your shoulder seam seam allowance of your front bodice main and front bodice facing are actually going different directions it just allows for less bulk in the shoulder seam there so you can see I kind of flipped the seam allowances so that they face different ways there okay now we've gone around the boat neck front and now we're just going around the low square back you'll see to get a nice finish there I'm going to lift my foot and turn it round so they get a nice sharp square there Go around a centimetre taking out my pins of course and then we're going to get to the edge there end there and back stitch and that's what it'll look like um, look a bit different depending on what necklines you chose but same construction there now we are going to snip into our neckline make sure to snip not into the stitch line because then it will unravel so we're going to snip in so that when we turn it out it's not going to be so um, thick and it can really relax out so you can see i'm snipping evenly around the boat neck because there's no corners we're snipping into but this will just help the boat neck relax as well. Alright, so we've done that step. Now we're going to understitch the neckline. So I'm going to want to take a little bit of focus onto this one because it is a, can be a little bit tricky. So the um, facing is on the right side. Make sure of that. And I looked at my label to make sure that was the right side. And you're going to understitch. So you're going to pull the seam allowance over to that right side and stitch on the facing side there. And you really want to make sure that you are stitching on your facing side because otherwise when you're finished it will come out and you would have stitched your mane on the wrong side. So we're going to go around the boat neck there, always making sure I'm not catching um, fabric I shouldn't be and pulling the seam allowance to the right. Boat neck under stitching is pretty easy, easy peasy. And then we'll go around to the low square back section and what you want to do is on the main fabric you want to pull it up like that to form that square so that when you sew around it it really creates that nice crisp finish um, pulling the seam allowance to the right as you can see there just kind of going slow around there yeah there you go you can see it's all 
shaped out nicely. Just taking your time around that corner to make sure you caption that seam allowance underneath and um, getting a nice finish there. Turn it around, lift the, edge, the um, foot and then place it back down. Here you're gonna, you might be sewing past your label as well. And seam allowance under to the right. And again, you just want to shape out, pull that fabric up to shape that square neckline, or it might be the V neckline you're doing. Um, you just really want to make sure that that shape is looking good and not trying to sew along the line or trying to stretch it out. Just want to keep it all in shape there. And turn your foot again. And we're nearly done the under stitching, which is great. I'm just checking that I've got all my fabric out of the way there because you really don't want to be sewing any fabric into your seam because that will be unpicking. Okay, so we have finished the understitching there. And step 10, press neckline plus wraps. So this is a nice little step. Um, as you can see, I have a cloth there and it's actually damp. You can use a little bowl of water or anything just to slightly wet your hands as it'll just mean you can roll out the fabric nicer um, between your fingers and kind of get that nice crisp edge that you want to press. Um, it really, yeah, it really does help. So it's a little tip, which I'm sure most of you probably use. Um, now I'm just pressing the bow neck, so you want to make sure you're, you're seeing that understitch line there on the facing and it's not rolling through to the front. Look, we've already got our neckline, this is exciting. Congrats if you've got up to this step so far. Um, now we're just going to snip the threads and we're going to turn out our waist sashes and press them. Um, so you can use a needle or a safety pin to do this, as you can see I've just used my hand for this one and I'm just going to grab the end and pull it through but it is ideal for this next part to poke that corner out with a um, something blunt like a, a knitting needle or a paintbrush or something like that just to um, get that nice point and then you want to do the same rolling the fabric between your fingers and pressing it out and I will be of course um, I press that little edge out with a needle after this so I get that nice finish. This is what it looks like at the end, so there's your waist wrap and you want to repeat for your other waist wrap of course. Now while you are at the ironing board you want to measure the hem of your front and back bodices um, because this measurement here will be the measurement that you gather your skirts front and back to. Next we'll be gathering the sleeves. So you want to put a pin into that top notch um, just to mark it for future construction otherwise it will get lost in the gathers. You want to set your stitch lengths to 4 or higher and you want to sew from one notch round to the other. As you can see I actually back stitch at the start there but you don't need to, I just like to because it keeps my gathers nice and then pass, sew past that pin round to the other notch and do not back stitch at the end, leave a long tail. Um, and you want to sew another line and right next to that line, not on top of it because this will gather nicer. Um, and you want to make sure both those stitch lines are within the centimetre seam allowance because you don't want to be seeing those stitch lines when you sew it into the armhole. There we go, I am gathering that now. You can reference your gather chart on how much you need to gather your sleeve um, to fit into the armhole there. You want to do this for both sleeves, obviously. There you go, I'm just evening out those. And I'm just tying off the end of that stitch because I didn't back stitch. But I'm tying it off once I get to the measurement I want so that it doesn't move and it's all ready to go. Now we're going to gather skirts. So it's a similar kind of process. You want to stitch along the top there within the centimetre seam allowance, doing a four length stitch or higher and as 
I said before I backstitch at the start but that is personal preference and definitely do not backstitch the end, leave a long tail, stitch another row of gathering stitches just so that it's a nicer finish when you gather it, creates a more even look. There we go, within the centimetre seam allowance and I'm just getting the top two threads to be able to gather that and I'm gathering the skirt to the bodice measurement that we took before so the bottom of the front bodice and the bottom of your back bodice so that we can match it up and you want to repeat the skirt gathering for your other skirt as well I'm going to tie that off. So now we're going to sew the inseam pockets. Um, you can see the notches that you would have snipped there. Um, we're going to place right sides together. So right side of the pocket bag to right side of the skirt. Matching up the notches there. Pin it in place so that you are keeping it all nice and tidy. Now you want to stitch, uh, change your stitch length down to 2.5 again um, because it was on the gathering stitch. Now you want to start in from your side seam, so a centimetre in and a centimetre away from your notch. Back stitch there, centimetre in and you're going to turn the fabric around underneath the foot and now you're going to sew a centimetre in from your side seam up to the other notch and a little bit past but a centimetre past again and then you know, turn the fabric around again you'll see in a second once you pass that notch turn it around and then sew back out into the side seam back stitch at the end of course and you want to snip into the corner of that pocket don't snip into the stitch line um, so that it doesn't unravel and you want to kind of snip from that notch there that'll make it fold out nicely all right so if you want to take the extra step you can overlock that or zigzag it and now what you want to do is flip out your pocket and you actually want to under stitch that so these are right sides up now and you want to pull that seam allowance over to your pocket bag and edge stitch along there on top of the pocket bag. Just on the section where your pocket bag has been connected to your skirt. We go back stitch. That'll be a nice finish there with that stitch secured and now it's laid out again right sides up and you want to place one of your other pocket bags on top of the pocket bag you've just sewn, right sides together, pin it around a little bit so that you're making sure you sew that curve of the pocket nicely. I'm going to pick it up and put it into the sewing machine, centimetre seam allowance as per usual, make sure those edges are matched. And we're going to sew around, taking the pins out as we go. There we go, nearly at the top there. Just want to make sure that we don't catch the skirt. Just sewing the pocket. Snip it. And there you go, you just want to overlock that now. Walk around. Easy as that. Making sure not to catch the skirt. And now you want to lay it back down and flip it back under. So now you can see that we're going to push out those corners there, pin in preparation for sewing down the side seam in future um, which will create a nice inseam pocket with the no pinning like that. Now we're going to sew the sleeve seam, so we're going to take the sleeve and fold it in on itself right sides together and match at the long edge there. And we're going to sew down there one centimetre seam allowance taking the pins out as we go and of course repeating this step uh, for the other sleeve once you have done. Okay. 
Okay, so we're now going to be sewing the bodice to the skirt section. You take your front skirt section right side up, um, and your main front bodice, so the one there you can see, and put right sides of that front main bodice to the right side of the skirt, at the bottom of the bodice and the top of the skirt. You're going to be sewing along there. You can sew along there both the facing and the main together if you're more of a beginner. Otherwise, we can go for this option, which we're going to do, sewing along there, just the main bodice to the front skirt. So I'm going to pin that down, as always. And we're going to pop it over to the machine. I actually like to sew with my gathers um, facing up to me, so as I sew along, I can make sure that they're all sewing in nicely and evenly spread, and they're not um, getting tucked up and sewing wrong. And you want to make sure that you're sewing past the gathering stitches so that they are enclosed in the seam. You can always take these out afterwards if you wish. Um, excuse the dog that just went past. It's Honey out in the garden, playing in the mud, probably in about five minutes I think it was. So we're just going to be sewing through there, taking the pins out as we go as per usual. And we're going to get to the end, do a back stitch and pull it out. And there we go, that's how it should be. Alright, now we're going to be securing the facing. I've just finished sewing my back main bodice onto my back skirt as well. And you can see there, there is the back facing loose and free. Um, and we want to be securing that facing down to look like that. So it'll be nice finish on the inside. So to do that... Essentially, we want to do pretty much what we've just done is take the right side of that um, back facing and place it on the seam allowance of the main bodice and back skirt. And you want to pinch that, flip it around, and sew it together. It can be a little bit confusing once you have it like that. You're thinking, oh, have I got the right bit? Um, so, you know, maybe just do that a couple times to be sure that you've got the right bit, but I can promise you when you are sewing it um, and after you've done it, it is correct. It just feels a little bit funny as you're sewing it if you haven't done this finish before. And um, as you go, you want to be making sure to sew on the stitch line that you're following there so that that stitch line doesn't be exposed when um, you've finished it. And you just want to be pulling out fabric as you go you can actually pull it out beforehand and pin it all together it's probably the wisest choice but as you can see here it all just folds out might just take a little bit of extra concentration but you just got to trust that you're doing the right bit and you will be and then back stitch at the end and then we're going to turn it out, and this is what it will look like, what you've just sewn. So, as you can see, that edge has been secured, like we showed you just before, to the skirt now. And now you want to overlock that section as well that I just showed. So we're going to go into the machine, pull it out again as we go. I'm just going to overlock this just so, with any wear... There, it's just going to last for a long time. Um, of course, or zigzag if you do not have an overlocker. Just make sure to not be catching any of the section or the skirt section that you don't want to be catching and just overlocking that seam there and you'll get to the end. And you want to repeat that for the front as well. Now that we're up to overlocking, we actually want to be just overlocking that sleeve seam we sewed before as well. Now we are going to be sewing the sleeve hem. So um, with this one as well, you are welcome to press it because it's a straight hem. Um, you'll see that I just double roll it there um, and I actually just do it by hand I roll it under as I go however you can pin or press it up one centimeter and then one centimeter again for um, a finish that will hide that raw edge 
if you are sewing a sleeve, the short puff sleeve or the sleeve with an elastic finish, the hem would be different and you can reference that in the sewing instructions in the sewing PDF. Once you've done both of your sleeve hems, we move on to the side seams. So you're going to do a lot of pinning here, so make sure you've got your pins ready. Um, and we're actually going to place that waist sash 1.5 centimetres down from the top of your side seam. That's to leave enough room for your sleeve to go in there and sew into that um, seam allowance. And there's actually four layers of fabric here that you are sewing together, so you're welcome to baste your waist sash edge together first and your edges of your bodice together as well. But I am just pinning all four together. There we go, and you can see that the seam should be at the top of the waist sash there. And now we're going to place the right side down of the back section, hold it over. Just going to make sure that our waistlines there are matched up first. And pinning our skirt section there, that's our pocket that we'll see in a minute. I'm going to be capturing that pocket bag in, yep. Putting that all in place. And now I'm going to be sewing down that side seam. This one takes also a little bit of patience. Back stitch at the start, a centimetre seam allowance as per usual. And of course we're sewing the right sides of our pieces all together with the waist sash enclosed in there. Excuse the fact that I just went over a pin. Obviously it is ideal to take out your pins beforehand to prevent slipping of fabric underneath. So I'm just continuously checking that I've got everything in place. Sometimes it pays to just make sure you've got all your layers of fabric still um, getting captured there. So now I've got up to the waistline. Just making sure that the pocket bag underneath is laying flat. Turn out the machine little bit so that I'm getting that angle of the skirt nicely. Okay now we're going to be coming up to securing that inseam pocket there. As you can see I'm just making sure I've got everything nice. So we've got the pocket bag in the middle there and once I get up to that point I actually am going to mark it with my fingernail just so I can make sure I sew over that to capture the edge of that pocket opening in there. And then once I reach that I'm actually going to pull out the fabric from underneath and as you can see I probably reach up there just make sure I'm not capturing the edge of that pocket opening in there so I pull it away there from the seam that I'm sewing to the left. We're going to do the same there. I've, I've seen where the edge of the pocket opening is and I'm going to mark it with my fingernail or something sharp if you don't have nails and I'm just, as you can see, pulling away the edge there just to make sure I'm only capturing that corner. I think I'm just adding in some more pins down my skirt seam there making sure you capture the bottom of the pocket bag in. And head down to the bottom of your side seam. Yay! Turn it in for the hem. 
and we're just going to make sure that we have actually captured it all in nicely there's the 1.5 centimeter for the sleeve and we go down past and to the pocket and you can see that that's all captured nicely overlocking the side seams um, obviously you want to sew both side seams that we just did but i've just shown you one as per usual and now we're overlocking that seam we've just finished once once we know that it's all sewn correctly and overlock the other side seam of course too right so sewing the sleeve into the armhole you want to make sure your dress is turned so the wrong side's facing out and you want to make sure your sleeve is turned so the right side is facing out because we're going to tuck it inside there the sleeve um, and we're going to do right sides together and we're going to match at that um, shoulder seam there and that pin that we previously marked to show that that is the center of our sleeve and we just want to go around and pin it into the armhole matching the notches there that you'll have make sure the darts are um, excess are facing down and matching in that side seam there to your sleeve seam and back round just pinning it all in so that when you sew it it's all going to match up nicely and once we've sewed this we're going to obviously repeat it for the other sleeve and armhole so that's all matching there i'm going to start at the side seam there and we're going to make sure we aren't catching our waist sash underneath um, because that will be sitting just right there one centimetre seam allowance as we sew around making sure everything's caught in and if you would like how we did with the skirt gathers and we're sewing that all together I did have the gathers facing up and you can do that for the sleeve as well to make sure that your gathers are being sewn in how you would like but here I am just sewing this way up, keep going around the armhole, capturing all your material in. As you can see as I go past I'm just double checking every now and then to make sure I'm capturing all the layers of fabric there. It takes a little bit of patience, obviously you won't be going as fast as this video is fast forwarding to be, um, but just enjoy the process is the main thing. Sometimes you might have to get your unpicker out, and that's fine too, it's all part of the process. Just making sure all my layers are connected there, making sure I'm not capturing anything I shouldn't be. And we're heading back round, making sure not to capture that waist sash underneath. Back stitch at the end and pull it out. This is how it should look with your gathers nicely there. And your sleeve seam there, matching your side seam, your waist sash. And of course repeat it for the other side. Now you're going to want to overlock that seam that you just sewed. And just turning it around as you go and another thing to note um, is you just want to make sure you can see a little bit here in this video I have allowed my dress to hang off the table a little bit when I'm sewing but that is actually not very ideal you want to make sure that your fabric isn't pulling away from the sewing machine because that can sometimes create a wonky stitch now we're going to press and sew the skirts uh, hem we're nearly there so first of all we want to press it one centimeter up all the way around it's really important to press this part because otherwise you're going to end up with a wonky hem especially because it's a curved hem for this Gracie wrap so go around and press one up and then roll up again um, and that will be two centimeters roll up you want to go around the whole skirt hem again and press two centimeters up welcome to pin as well if this helps now I'm going to take it to the machine and just Secure that along right next to the opening, so you just want to probably edge stitch that. I'll show you the finished product in a second. Here we go. 
beautiful. And now, if you're doing the shirt, cuff sleeve with a shirt um, finish, you actually want to now wind um, your shirt elastic onto a bobbin. There you go, that's wound out. You want to make sure there's not too much tension when you're winding that on. Um, put it in as you usually would a bobbin into your machine. Take it up. I actually also will show you that I test the shirring onto a scrap piece of fabric first just to make sure that that's going to shear up nicely. And pull the shirring elastic through there. Um, make sure you set your stitch length to four or higher. Back stitch at the start and at the end. Now I'm just going to show you here, I actually didn't work to start with. I just had to rewind my bobbin a little bit. And this is what it should look like. So there you go, it's all shirred. That's actually shirred more than it usually would on just a first row. But that is how we want to have it looking. Sure the sleeve cuff. Right, so two centimeters away from the sleeve hem there, we want to start, so it just ends up with a nice little frill. We want to go all the way around two centimeters away from that hem, and once you reach back to where you started, you actually want to back stitch. Well, I like to back stitch, and then as if you're kind of finishing the stitch and then lifting the foot. Once you've done that, so back stitch and lifting the foot, just to start the new stitch line about one centimeter away and we're actually going to do six rows of shirring stitching there and that's me finished at the end back stitch really make sure you to do a good back stitch um, at the end because otherwise shirring can unravel and that's what it should look like there you go beautiful cuff sleeve and your gracie wrap is complete make sure to tag bold one on insta of your creations